Uh, what I'm talking now today is, uh, um, is about modeling, about which kind of models. Doing models by components uh, as we do uh, can generate the idea that uh, modeling is just assembling things and uh, the more you are, the better you are. This is a not, not exactly the, the concept. And actually modeling by component is, uh, uh, doesn't work uh, just for addition, adding stuff, but also for uh, changing parts. So I am discussing, discussing some of these topics. And in particular, uh, in this uh, short talk, I am, uh, I am talking about why uh, we don't use, and do we, if we can use uh, uh, ordinary differential equations instead of partial differential equations. Not giving the answer anyway, but, uh, 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 but just arguing uh, a few things. Like which is the topic of the presentation? Because it, it started very quickly. Yes, uh, yeah. Now you see it going on. <laughs> no, because I would like to correct the correct the data in the simulation. Yeah, uh, the, the, con the concept is modeling. Uh, why? Uh, and this part is a simplification, a model simplification, from the conceptual point of view, anyway. So, uh, one thing is that uh, whenever we do modeling, we have to do uh, several simplifications. For three, uh, for let's say for three reasons, for mathematical reasons, because uh, for uh, practical reasons, computational reasons, and uh, also for uh, numerical, which is not exactly as mathematical. Uh, we have to do compromises in the three things that uh, represent. Uh, uh, the way in which in this school we, we try to capture the measure and the uh, tractability of the problem requires requires uh, always a sacrifice. Uh, uh, let's say the, the, the assumption can be at the beginning that uh, we need partial differential equation to describe the reality because reality is uh, in space so uh, and we have to reproduce the spatial variability through the, in the spatial dynamics so this would be for instance having uh, Navier-Stokes equations on the surface uh, Navier-Stokes uh, water those will be atmosphere interaction between them uh, ground, wa uh, ground water equations for the ground water and uh, Richard's equation for the Vadov zone and uh, everything kind of communicating between us, between, between. Uh, but this is, uh, we, we cannot afford this. We, can, we cannot even afford to solve the, uh, the Navier-Stokes equations, for instance. And uh, we have the problem of characterizing. <coughs> it's not so far. Some colleagues, for instance, they used to integrate uh, the uh, Richard's equations Overall, the United States, yeah. But they do other type of compromises then. And uh, for what regard us, we are, we, uh, our unit, uh, our spatial unit is a uh, hydrologic response unit, meaning a, a subcatchment. And one thing is, uh, can we just average the, the quantities we have inside uh, for a HRU? Or, uh, how does the fluxes at the border are calculated if we do averages, which is representative of that? My main claim during the, uh, the course was that uh, uh, we have uncertainty of how to do these things, but uh, we can use mass and energy conservation to constrain the thing. Whatever the uh, uh, whatever is the way that we determine the fluxes, mass has to be conserved, and, uh, and the energy must be conserved. Uh, so uh, let's, let's talk about simplification across literature. 
Uh, let's say we don't even start from uh, a Navier Stokes equation. We use an approximation of Navier Stokes equation we call the Savannah equation. We know how to solve it. Uh, let's say from 20 years, we know how to solve it very well. And uh, in 1D one, one or 2D, let's say here they put to be the Savannah equation, meaning the Savannah equation, the flow of water above above surfaces, which is a, uh, an integration of the, of the Navier-Stokes equation. And you just, for that, you just work by integration. You take the Navier-Stokes equation, you integrate over the, the vertical, we do uh, actually some other simplifications, and then you get uh, the Savannah equations. Then, uh, years ago, it was thought that this was too demanding for for the whole landscape. So we can simplify the Savannah equation going to uh, uh, obtain 1D uh, kinetic, for instance, kinematic equations. Or we, we have a, a um, <coughs> parabolic approximation of 1D, the Savannah equation. We have all the machinery there to derive mathematically from the more general to the, to the uh, let's say, to the <coughs> more integrated part. This decreasing the parameter, any decrease on the number of parameters or in the spatial number of parameters means that we put some assumption. Even if then we are using to forget it when we are at stage two. Uh, there can be then, uh, from the kinematic equation, various strategies for aggregating the fluxes. If we are in a, uh, in a catchment, we can think that the catchment actually, the shape of the catchment is much more important actually than the dynamics. So that some, only some elements of the dynamics remain when we describe a catchment. And so for instance, these are the theories like uh, the GOH. I think uh, that's uh, there is a, a, a nice path to it through the last 30 years or 40 years of history. And uh, this is uh, actually from 1969, so we have almost uh, 40 years, 40 years of GOH. And uh, this passed through including a different way to analyze the problem <coughs> of producing runoff, which is we are talking about water <coughs> movement on the surface. So essentially we are not thinking to the production of runoff, but to the movement of runoff. So here yeah, there is a few papers, which was some of one I my name. In particular, this was a my first paper um, on journals, not on the handbook for school. <laughs> and um, uh, in that paper, we, we, sh we actually saw what I was saying before. <coughs> we mean, uh, pay attention, guys, when we are going to produce the discharge. Discharge is an aggregating process in which each one of the pieces in space as contributing to the to the what is going on to the outlet. How this stuff sum and this stuff sum according to the topology and the geometry of the basin counts even more than the dynamics. Even more than to the and just a few things remain. The reasons why this happens can uh, we believe that uh, and I talk in the on the first day, we believe that they are due to some uh, general principle like minimization of energy dissipation, uh, so that the shapes of the river and the banks and the structure in a way that just some dynamical fe fe uh, features <coughs> remain, like uh, velocity tries to be constant throughout the river, so we can use a ve constant velocity yeah, along the river, at least for calculating distances, and this works interestingly, interestingly well. Second, second part of simplification that we can apply is when we go to treat the water <coughs> movement in soil. 
And uh, here we, uh, we can think that the most general equation is some kind of generalization of Richard's equation, meaning that uh, a general, uh, such a general generalization in which uh, uh, water flow in the Vadol zone, then uh, you can have a switch to uh, uh, complete uh, circulation and the movement, but all the, the movement happens inside a, a porous medium. Uh, in, a, in essence, uh, Richard's equation is uh, mass conservation plus some hypothesis about the relation between the driving force inside the soil and, uh, uh, and the structure of the soil, which, which gives us the water retention curves and so on. And how this happens, maybe, uh, maybe we can have a generalization even also which uh, take into account the <coughs> uh, state of water if we have freezing soil which is not uh, which is not uh, is quite is still an uns quite an unsolved problem even if we gave some contributions but that is the Richard equation 3d uh, is necessary all this complexity when you go actually to see several cases of uh, the dynamics in, in 3d you see that uh, on hill slope, uh, what you observe is a, an homogeneous movement all around from, from the vertical. Let's say, let me now specify exactly which is a vertical. If it is slope normal or vertical in the sense of uh, in the direction of gravity. But uh, more or less, if we start, if we start from uh, uh, several initial conditions, you can, we can test with the uh, 3D Richard's equation. One problem also in literature was that we have legacy uh, with lit literature. Also here, uh, uh, the very first uh, interesting solution of Richard's equation came since 1991 by S Mike Celia. Before we were not able, we were saying, okay, a Richard's equation are nice, but are pretty unsolvable. Uh, from 91 to, uh, let's say, 10 years ago, many people were solving Richard's equation, but many were, we were solving also wrongly the Richard's equation. For instance, not taking into account the transition unsaturated to, to saturated part, meaning that uh, Richard's equation, as uh, they were born, are defined just for the unsaturated part and the variation of water content when it, uh, the water is saturated is zero so the, the driving force in Richard's equation apparently is zero when you go to sat saturation <coughs> but you know then uh, now we are quite confident that we are solving Richard's equation in the right way and uh, and uh, we are not getting, having error coming from numerics. And uh, so uh, we can, when we do those uh, thought simulation, for instance, in, in parallel this law, what we see is that actually, for certain reasons, you, you have first a vertical movement and then the lateral movement. Because of also the structure of the, of the variation of hydraulic con conductivity uh, with the water content. I think this is pretty consolidated <coughs> as an idea. Uh, so essentially